water is the primary means by which uh, we look at the environment. It's the life's blood of an ecosystem. It's what makes plants grow and animals alive. Plus, you can drink it. When we were kids growing up, my grandpa and my dad used to take myself, my brothers, and my cousins on weekend trips down the river. And we would go down the river and there would be not another soul all weekend long. I grew up on the ocean. When I was about six years old, my family took a trip and we were camping and exploring the coast. And I remember that, having that connection. So there's been water in my blood since I was a small child. Every summer, I would basically spend my time either in the water or at the side of the water. I had this wonderful opportunity to go to summer camp, and there I was on the first day where it's time to go in the lake to do your swim test. And I was really nervous, but eventually I took that first step. I think that was my first real connection with water. If you look at how was Maine settled, well, how was any place settled? People settled along water. Even our counties are based on watersheds. And sometimes when I'm teaching class, I'll ask my students, how many of you live in a watershed just to see if anyone doesn't raise their hand? Because we all live in a watershed. And I do that to make a point about the importance, the prevalence of water in our lives. Even if we don't really think about it, it's there. I'm Tom Saviello and I am the state senator for Franklin County. I also have a PhD in forest resources and a master's degree in agronomy and a BS degree in forestry. Well, one of the things I learned very quickly as a forester is that we base our economy in the state of Maine on renewable resources, whether it be farming, fishing, or forestry. And with that is water, because it is a renewable resource. Natural resources are a big part of Maine's economy, from tourism to the wood products industry to Poland spring water, or even blueberries and lobster. They all rely on good, clean water. Poland spring water dates back to the mid-1800s, so people have a long-standing link to water in Maine. I grew up in New Jersey in the 50s and 60s, where you did not walk in any spring or any stream because the water was polluted. And now having been in Maine since 1972, I recognize the water quality that we have out there, whether it be our lakes, whether it be our streams, whether it be our groundwater. Folks in Maine are typical New Englanders. They are self-sufficient. They are a bit suspicious of new things, wanting to know everything about something before they endorse it. Mainers are, are good old-fashioned Yankees. There are some towns with, you know, generations of folks that have lived in the town from one family back 300 years. That's easy to find. I was born in Freiburg, and I moved away a few times, but basically I've lived my whole life here in Freiburg. And nobody loves Freiburg more than I love Freiburg. Maybe as much, but not anymore. I was raised with a family mindset that you give back to your community, you do for your community, and you find your strength and you find how you can work that into your community. My dad always said, if you see a problem, find a solution and then do it. Don't talk about it. Uh, Poland Spring, as a uh corporation doing business in Freiburg has been a topic of conversation for probably over a decade. The community did get into an uproar about it. They felt that it was the, the big mean corporation that was coming in and taking our resource and they weren't being very nice about it. You know, who do you think you are uh, just coming in and taking our water? Freiburg is blessed with a lot of water here, a lot of water. And on my properties alone, I've drilled five or six drill wells. And it's all good water. And, and yeah, it's pretty hard to go anywhere in Freiburg and not find water. I mean, we've got water everywhere, so. Poland Spring came into the area and they went into a deal with the privately owned water company and they were extracting water. Then people started getting concerned about, well, that's our water, what's happening to our water? 
One of the unusual things about water in Freiburg is the delivery system of it is privately owned. Most of us don't have that experience. They know of a municipal water system. That is not the case here in Freiburg. You either are part of the water district or you dig a well. Being a problem solver, I got together with our state rep at the time and a fundraiser in the area and an attorney, and we all got together and decided to co-found an organization called Freiburg Aquifer Resource Committee. We raised over $100,000. We hired a private geologist to come and do a study for us. What I learned was we live in a very unique area. We are a very low area surrounded with mountains and seasons that give us a lot of rain and a lot of snowfall and all that water runs right down into the Freiburg aquifer area. There was certainly some conflict when Poland Spring first came uh, and started working in Freiburg and by 2004, 2005. A lot of those issues that we face, we don't understand when we go to a new town very well. Uh, there could be generational issues between different families. You may be doing business with one side of an issue and not even know it uh, when you first enter a small town in Maine and Freiburg's no different. So when Poland Spring came to me and what their goal was, was to have someone in the community that the community trusted, that they knew that that person would be above all else protecting Freiburg. Um, what, what are the concerns? What are the people worried about? What, what is the fear factor? What do we need to do differently to make sure that they're comfortable and reassured? Uh, because they wanted to work hand in hand. They didn't want to work against us. They wanted to work with us. Relationships are hard, right? <laughs> um, they require work. And um, one of the things that I rely on in my profession is being a good listener. When Poland Spring realized that there was issues that people didn't understand and they started understanding more what the fiber of Freiburg was all about, they wanted to make sure that they had some place where people could come and ask their questions or voice their grievances or express themselves in whatever way they felt they needed to. They wanted to be more part of the community and so they decided to open up a office that would be open one day a week so that people could address that. So they wanted to have an open line of communication. If I was asked by another town to give my uh, best advice on how to deal with a corporation coming in, or with the potential of that, the first thing I would say is call other towns that have that corporation in it. Find out what they learned or calling the, P, calling the PUC, calling a hydrologist, calling a legislator, calling another city that's dealing with a Nestle Corporation. Well, a little bit of uh, research goes a long way. Fortunately, someone within the Nestle Corporation was smart enough to realize that they had come into a very close-knit community, a community that was very proud, and I think through Poland Spring, reaching across the table in a respectful, supportive way has gone a long way in helping our citizens realize that they are a friend, not a foe. I think the common concerns that people in Freiburg have or in other communities is really how is the water used, how is it protected, and people have a general assumption that you're going to take water uh, and it's going to be gone for their gen next generation. And that simply couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, Poland Spring would have you know, nothing to gain and everything to lose if we were to deplete aquifers or water levels in Maine. Then the next question is, how is it renewable? Well, your bedrock water is very old water. It's taken a long time for it to migrate through the soil into the surface of the bedrock and into the different fissures there. The water that Poland Springs uses is sand and gravel water. It replenishes every day. It rained this weekend, and that's probably two years from now's water for them. Remember, if spring stops flowing, they can no longer sell it as spring water. And they don't want to diminish this water supply. I've grown from seeing really bad water to seeing really good water and want to maintain that good water and make sure it's reused, it's used, and it's a renewable resource. 
Maine's blessed with a lot of sand and gravel aquifers, which is what Poland Spring uses today at all of our sites. They're relatively close to the surface of the earth, and so the springs are really an expression of the aquifer. It's where the aquifer flows water into uh, a stream or into a wetland, or water comes to the surface of the earth. And all of our natural springs have to have those defined points. That's part of our uh, FDA regulations. We monitor over 250 individual monitoring wells each month. That takes a team of geologists to go around the state of Maine and get all those water level readings and then report those data out to the public. So it's literally day by day, minute by minute, storm by storm that we're tracking uh, weather and infiltration data and then monitoring the water in the ground itself before it comes out as springs. When I was first approached Poland Springs coming into a Western Maine area, I made them promise me that they would hire local people, they would be very active in their community, and they would pay a very fair wage with benefits. So they come into this community and they kept all their promises. They hired locally. Then they paid a very fair salary with benefits and have become very active in the community. That's the kind of business that I want in the state of Maine. Uh, one, you're accessible and you have uh, really solid data to share and you take the time to share those data uh, over a long period of time. Really helps build trust. Uh, whether you're in a new community or if you've been in the community as long as we've been in Freiburg uh, for almost 20 years, uh, is really showing up and showing those data and keep repeating that cycle. This is Mainers working in Maine. And what makes it different and what makes it unique is that you have people who understand the community. You have people who want to contribute to their community. But it's not just through a donation or a, a community investment, as it were. It's partnership. Personal one-on-one -on -one relationships is the way to do business, uh, especially in Maine. You want to be able to be part of those discussions because they're happening. They're happening at the coffee shop or the breakfast place. That's where decisions sometimes are made on you know, future directions or how philanthropy is done in a town. You're not just a person or a company that's using a water in a community. You're actually there in the community. I came to Poland Spring when I was 19 years old. I wanted to interact with the public. So we would get people come in and I would do tours around the building day in and day out and found that there was a gap in information around the science behind the brand. And so I think it's important that it be a two-way street, right? There's gonna be constant communication. There has to be consistent communication. There has to be visibility in the community. I think we always have to be very aware that we're just borrowing water, that that molecule is there forever and it's going to process through and be in other things. And so the stewardship comes from this idea that you don't actually own something. It's a custodial role and borrowing sort of fits in with that notion of having custody of it for a while. Like every time you look at a river, for example, that bit of water that you looked at, that just went right past you and it's going somewhere else and it'll take a long time for it to cycle back. Our water system and our aquifer and our environment has never been as protected and guided as it has been since Poland Spring came into our community. They are strong advocates for the environment, education of the environment. Water stewardship, to me, it's a way of life. It's bringing the stewardship of the environment into everything that you do. It's walking through life with that mindset. We want to foster the next generation of environmental stewards. The Ecology School is one of my favorites. They're trying to teach environmental education through really engaging students. We've supported students attending the Ecology School since the early 2000s, so it's been a long partnership. The Ecology School has the amazing privilege of being in a state where water is prevalent. We have lots of it. We have lots of connections to those water systems that aren't always obvious. So here on our site, we are able to follow the water from freshwater systems all the way to saltwater systems and get to explore all those connections in between. So we can start in the forest, we can follow a stream out of the forest, we can end up at a salt marsh estuary which dumps into a freshwater river which flows into the Atlantic Ocean. It's an incredible outdoor connection that students can make. 
in an authentic way. To be able to see where that water flows down to and ends up in the ocean is a really powerful connection. We support the ecology school and the students that attend for the experience. We want to foster the next generation of environmental stewards, so we feel like the ecology school is doing just that. Should we put it in here? Yeah, yeah. I'll hold and put it in. I'll, okay, I'll you got a hole? All right. So water can be a finite resource. It can also be a renewable resource. In a state like Maine, where we're constantly indulged with water, we have water that comes from the sky every day. We have water that replenishes our systems in the spring when it melts from the oceans. We have water in so much abundance. In other places not very far away, in our own country, water is treated very differently and it impacts people's lives in a way that there is no ignoring what your impact and what your connection to water is. Our role in, in any community is to understand. It's to patiently listen and enter into a dialogue. You know, I, I think one of the experiences I've taken from you know, other work that I've done over the last 20 years has been a lot of people try to spend their time talking, right? They wanna get their message out. Uh, and one of the things that makes Nestle and, and Poland Springs approach, I think unique, special, and so effective is that what we try to do is we try to listen and gain an understanding first. Now, does it always end up that way? Of course not, that's not realistic. But I think we all share that mutual goal. Poland Spring owns over 5,000 acres in Maine today. The best way to protect an aquifer is to control land use. So we're just looking for places where it naturally rains, covered with trees and good soils, and has less development. So we try to own or conserve land in Maine around these springs so that we can deliver good quality tasting water for another 172 years. <laughs>